On the evening of that first day of the week, even though the disciples had locked the doors of a place where they were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood before them. Peace be with you, he said. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. At the sight of the Lord, the disciples rejoice. Peace be with you, he said again. As the Father had sent me, so I sent you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive man's sins, they are forgiven them. If you hold them bound, they are held bound. It happened that one of the twelve, Thomas, the name means twin, was absent when Jesus came. The other disciples kept telling him, We have seen the Lord. His answer was, I'll never believe it, without probing the nail prints in his hand without putting my finger in the nail marks and my hand into his side. A week later, the disciples were once more in the room, and this time Thomas was with them. Despite the locked doors, Jesus came in and stood before them. Peace be with you, he said. Then to Thomas, take your finger and examine my hands. Put your hand into my side. Do not persist in your unbelief, but believe. Thomas said in response, My Lord and my God. Jesus then said to him, You became a believer because you saw me. Blessed are they who have not seen and have believed. Jesus performed many other signs as well, signs not recorded here, in the presence of his disciples, but these had been recorded to help you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, so that through this faith, you may have life in his name. Verbum Domine. <clears throat> Let us all be seated. Today is the second Sunday of Easter. And as we proceed with the liturgy of the Mass, we begin to learn more and more about the teachings of the Catholic faith. You see, during the Sunday liturgy, we learn the teachings of the Catholic Church little by little. And as we progress, the teachings become more solid and more complicated. 
As Saint Paul says, the teachings are presented to us like milk, and milk is meant for babies. And as we grow in the spiritual life, it is presented to us in the form of solid food and even meat. And so the Mass for today presents to us deeper and more important doctrines of the Catholic Church. And it tells us the importance of faith. There are three theological virtues necessary for salvation. Faith, hope, and charity. The moment we have faith, we also have hope and charity. And so if we have faith, the possibility is great that we are going to be saved. And so it is so important for us at least to find out if we have faith or not. And faith in today's gospel is defined in this word that you believe even if you do not see. So you believe even if you do not see. Now the word to see can be to see with your physical eyes or to understand with your mind. So in scripture, to see is with the eyes or sometimes even with your ears. But it must eventually go into the mind, into the intellect. The intellect must be able to say, I believe this truth. And the gospel for today shows us Thomas who did not have faith. And as such, he was in danger of losing his soul. But then Thomas was one of the apostles and Christ wanted to save him. Christ loved him. In fact, Christ chose him to be one of the apostles. And so Christ had to fix his erroneous belief. And so Thomas says words which showed he does not have faith. I will not believe unless I see. Now, that is a very wise statement when it pertains to natural, to human things. You must not really believe unless you see with regard to natural things. And you should be very wise. You should not believe unless you see. But when it comes to the Catholic religion, it cannot work because all the teachings of the Catholic Church, we cannot see. And so if you don't believe because you do not see, you cannot become a Catholic. Heaven and hell do you see it? No. Jesus Christ, today, angels and devils, do you see them? No. And just because you don't see them, won't you believe in these things? That 
is precisely what is going on in the world today. Because we do not see heaven, nobody is working to go to heaven. And because we do not see hell, we are doing nothing to avoid going to hell. And if we go more forward to the teachings of the Catholic Church, if you don't believe in heaven, you will not believe in the way that leads to heaven. And if you don't believe in hell, you will not avoid going to hell. And so today we see a world where people are working to eat, to get clothing and shelter and so many other things, but are doing nothing to go to heaven or to avoid hell. So it is so important for us to believe in those things which we do not see, like angels and devils and heaven and hell. But then, if we do not see these things, how can we believe? Wouldn't it be ridiculous for us to believe in something that we do not see or something that we do not understand? Yes, it is ridiculous and we should never do it. But then, if we say that these things had been taught by God, then we must believe it. If we say this was said by our parents, we usually believe it. It is said by the newspaper, we tend to believe it. When actually we should doubt it when it comes from our parents in newspapers because they can commit mistakes being human. But, when it is said by God, who is defined as one who will not deceive and cannot be deceived, then we must believe. Look at the last sentence in the Gospel for today. Christ said, all these things had been written down that you may believe. So, the three readings you had during Mass, we must believe them. Why? Because those were written down, Christ said, that you may believe. And so when we believe that there is hell and heaven and angels and devils and somebody asks you why do you believe your answer must always be the same because God said so but then you have to make sure that God really said so and so Christ continues and says, these things were written and they are recorded to help you believe. And so if something is not found in scriptures, you must not believe. You must check everything that is not found in scriptures. Like for instance, today we hear even priests 
saying that when you die, everything is annihilated. Your body, your soul, everything is annihilated. Everything is gone. Now, would you believe that? Well, because it was said by man, you must check it up. And you check it up through scriptures. And in today's gospel, we say precisely that Christ said that you must believe even if you do not see. But as long as it is recorded in the gospel of Christ, why must you believe? Because when you die, your soul continues to live, is alive, and will either go to heaven or to hell. But if it has faith, if that soul believes, you will go to heaven. And so you see, the rule in the world is don't believe unless you have proofs. Don't believe. You must demand for proofs. When it comes from the word of God, will you believe? No, unless it is found recorded as the words of God in sacred scriptures. So you see, we Catholics do not really easily believe. We always check, check, and double check that the things we do are the words of God. And so here we see Thomas in deep trouble because he did not believe, because he did not see. But Christ was so generous to him and said, okay, Thomas, you know, for your error, you are supposed to go to hell, but since you are one of my beloved apostle, here are my hands. Put your finger in the nail marks and your hand on my side. St. Augustine says, Thomas did not put his finger in the nail marks and did not put his hand on the side of Christ. Yet he knelt down and said, My Lord, and my God. The words of Thomas, my Lord and my God, addressing Christ, is only found recorded in scriptures. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.